Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim G.K. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show with Tim J.K. I'm your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having Raquel Raleigh Wilson, who is the author of How to Make Love to Your Child. She's going to explain that. If you'd like to speak with her, give her a call at 347-324-3460. Again, 347-324-3460. Or you can post your question in the chat room, or you can go ahead and send that question uh, via Twitter on hash sign Apple Capital. We do ask you to turn on your radio if you do call in so we won't get the echo effect. Ms. Raleigh, welcome to the program. Ms. Wilson, welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I'm happy to be here. Great. I guess just to dive into this, tell us about yourself. Where are you from and how did you come by writing this book? Well, I'm from Michigan. I lived in Michigan all of my life. Wow. The book was inspired by the birth of my first child. Mm -hmm. I realized a love I had never felt before, and it was important to me that this child always felt that love. If I had to punish him, I wanted him to still feel the love, regardless of the interaction that we were having. And I decided that I wanted all children to feel that way, which inspired the book as well. And I discussed it with my husband and the title, and he was a bit amused, my first husband, who subsequently passed away. And he was supportive but am amused by the title. And how to make love to your child, it means what it says but not what you think. I did want a title that was interesting, that okay. expressed the continuation of love in the parent-child relationship. Now, sex is something that begins, then ends. To me, make, to make something, it's a never-ending process. I looked up the definition, and if you don't mind, I'd like to read a few sure. of the, the first definitions. Make, to create, construct, form, shape. The second definition, to give a new form or use to. Third definition, to cause to become. The fourth definition, to cause to behave in a particular manner. And as parents, we are doing all of those things. We are creating a particular type of individual. And hopefully, we are doing a good job. Wow. When you mention the title, it, the first thing you say is not what you think. I said, I haven't had a chance to even think about it. <laughs> I was just, uh, when you mentioned the title, you just mentioned the title. And I said, hmm, I knew it was something more to that. And I didn't think of the latter half was some people... Maybe half the population would think and some of them wouldn't think. But, yeah, my mind actually would say, hey, okay, what is actually, what is she trying to say in, in this message? But but that's the funny thing of, really about it. Now, I think in here, you said you, you, your, it was from your, when you wrote this book, it expired from your first marriage? Yes, my first marriage. And, unfortunately, I was widowed at a young age. Wow. I was 24. Mm-hmm. However, I do like to point out that the book, the idea started as a collaboration. It was something that my husband wanted to be involved in. And we sat mm -hmm. down and we kicked around some ideas. And then when he actually passed, I finished it. It was a, a therapy for me. Mm -hmm. And it, it wow. gave me something constructive to do to help get through that grief period. Wow. And how many, just to, for the listening audience, how many children do you have? I have four children. Okay. The oldest is a boy, Michael. Mm -hmm. He's 23. I have 15-year-old twin girls, wow. Kayla and Krista, beautiful girls. And I have a five-year-old firecracker who runs the house, and her name is <sighs> Caressa. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> She's the wow. boss of all of us. <laughs> Why is that? Is the youngest child uh, have all of this liberty than versus the other? And the, the first one's always more structured, and the second one, 
is the You're middle child. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But always right. that last one, that I last one in the family. When you know it's the last, it's just so special, and I know I'm done. So I enjoy her, and everything she does is so cute and so wonderful, and she's not a bad child. She's a delight. Everyone mm-hmm. in the house enjoys her until she tears up some of her sister's things, and then they get a little oh. upset. And they show run and hide up under my skirt, and of course I protect her. <laughs> well, how long this book has been out? Well, I debuted the book. I was twenty six, nineteen ninety three. It received quite a bit of press. Press, I'm sorry, both mm-hmm. print and television. However, being a self published author, I was unable to get a distributor. So I pulled back and I attempted to get a distributor. It never happened. Fast forward to now and Amazon. Amazon is such a blessing for self-published authors. I love Amazon. The book is available on Amazon in POD format as well as Kindle ebook format. Mm -hmm. Also, on the website, if someone would prefer to have a classic, the original book, which is hand-signed and hand-numbered, they can order that directly from the website, How to Make Love to Your Child. It's a little more costlier than the others, but there's only 1,100 left, and they're 20 years old, and they're in great shape, and I think some people prefer collectors like myself. I I would prefer a collector's edition as opposed to the the mass-marketed version. So there are options available. Wow. And how was it, is, was it really difficult to get with Amazon or it was really easy? You submit it, they consider it, say, hey, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and distribute this. And then part two of that question, as you mentioned, as for the independent small business person like yourself, Amazon is really is a blessing. It has opened the market, I mean, across the board, like the web, from publishing, yeah. From record company, you can do and be your own person without Absolutely. any uh the influences of a large company. How did you get started in going to Amazon to try to get your book published? Well, it was a very simple process. I had the I had the book professionally converted for the um the Kindle version, the Mobi file. And that mm-hmm. was a, that wasn't terribly costly. It was around three hundred dollars for the conversion, but I do advise a professional conversion. A lot of people complain that Amazon said, well, no, you have to do this, you have to do that, and they're back and forth. But usually those are the people who uploaded their Mm -hmm. own version or, you know, are directly from their file to Mm -hmm. Amazon. And that doesn't always work, which is why I went with the professional, to have it professionally done. The process is very simple. Amazon is very quick. It says your book will be available and three to five days, it was available in 12 hours. I was thrilled. That was the POD. And when I uploaded the e-book, that was available in maybe a day and a half. They're very quick. You have a question, they respond. So it's it's a great opportunity for self-published authors. The only thing is you have to be prepared to self-market. Okay. And how do you self-market yourself? Well, you call people like yourself (laughs) Mm -hmm. and explain what you have and the benefits to that particular company or to their listening, I'm sorry, that particular program, and Mm -hmm. also the benefits of what you have for their listening audience. And if they're interested and they feel it's beneficial, then they'll have you on. You can also contact newspapers, your local paper to have articles written, I know there are um, book reviewers online as well. And one thing I recommend anyone can do, Google um, how to market a self-published book. And there are numerous ideas. And some work for others and some don't. So if you Google that, you can see according to what your material is about, which direction is more suitable for you. Okay. And that's a... Just Google and 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 the information comes up. Yes, Google how to market a self published book, tips on marketing a self published book, things like that. Okay. And there are several um, out there, and there are successful authors 
who have done certain things and they will tell you what they've done. But like I said, it's all different and you have to decide which method will work the best for you. Okay. And when you start your process, when you call a, uh, a newspaper and, and kind of explain your story, mm-hmm. were they really susceptive or they said, well, let me read Is the it, book first and then we go from there or how that for conversation For me in happens. particular, from because mm-hmm. of the title of my book, is that why you're asking that? Yeah, because of the title okay. and when a person just normally calls. I mean, sometimes okay. we can get them, sometimes we can't. Well, fortunately, because of the pre-press that I've had, initially when my book debuted in 1993, I did the parent-child marriage ceremony and used it as a launching pad to get attention for the book. And also it was a beautiful event of something I, I wanted to do anyway. And it's a ceremony that I created, and it's also in the book. So I invited the press, and they attended. There were interviews. Um, there was television. So it ended up on the local news. Um, the, the Detroit News covered it, and eventually it went over AP. So, And that's when I started getting calls from television shows, national television shows, and I know the articles were reprinted all over the country through AP, the AP wire service. So if you can figure out an event that would be of interest to launch your book or product, that would be great. You can get the press to come out, and hopefully it'll snowball from there. But um, PR, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and you have to be motivated. You really have... But having a computer is amazing. It's like right at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. So the information, the contact information of different shows and newspapers, you can find practically anyone you, you want. When you did those interviews in the 90s, how was that having, I'm not sure you've been on some TV shows. Yes. How was that experience? I mean, I guess, it, did it go beyond your expectation? This television station is calling me and they want me to do an interview. Has it? Was it like a surreal experience? And when you finally got there, and can you name some of the shows you've been on? Yes. And how was that experience? Well, I did. The experience was great, first of all, because that, that was my intention. That's what I wanted. So I was very pleased with that mm-hmm. aspect. I did like maybe four local live interviews on the news. Some were supportive and some were not. I did the Detroit Black Journal show. That it was mm-hmm. a it was a nice, beautiful interview. It was a supportive interview. I went on the Montel Williams show and it was a scary experience because I was made to feel like I had done something terribly wrong. However, From the, title? He did. the title and the marriage. Oh, people in the audience were screaming at me and your son's gonna grow up and be a serial killer and blow up buildings and And then some people in the audience were like, no, I think it's beautiful. It's something I would do with my child. However, it did get the word out about the book. Now, like I said before, I could not get a distributor. I know if I had a distributor, the book would have sold. Because it wasn't available, it didn't. I was able to get it into several local stores where it did very well. Mm -hmm. So I know if I had been able to launch a, a nationwide distribution it would have been successful. I just distributors are not interested in working with self published authors, which again takes us to Amazon. Thank God for Amazon. Wow. So when you did the interview, like for example the Montel Williams show, they called you up and they flew you down there or they made some arrangements to get you down there or Yes, they did. They took care of all of the flight expenses, the hotel mm-hmm. and I was paid maybe a one hundred Twenty dollars, something like that. Not very much, and it was an overnight stay. They took care mm-hmm. of everything. Someone was waiting at the airport with a sign that had my name on it. We wow. were driven to the hotel and just kind of given an idea of what time they would pick us up for the show, and it went very smoothly. The the, the angle that Montel came from was that it was a negative thing. However, he was married at the time. His wife was on set. And in between break, I heard her tell him 
Honey, I've been flipping through this book, and it's beautiful. It's, you should look at it. You should look at it and change your mind. And he's like, brushed her away like, I don't want to hear that right now. I have everything settled. <laughs> I well, already you, know my you, approach. <laughs> do you think it because the reason was that way, because he – he was trying to get a controversial type absolutely. of... Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, then absolutely. versus they're saying, okay, here's the, the meat and potatoes of this book. So if we ask you what the meat and potatoes of the book, how will you give us that, that cliff note meat and potatoes of the book on how to do things? Well, I believe that parents do not come from an angle of respect because as parents, we know that the children belong to us. And... We function in ways toward our children that are very relaxed or sometimes very harsh, as if we don't have anyone to answer to. Mm -hmm. And I feel parents should pay more attention to how they talk to their children, how they interact with them, because you're building someone that hopefully you want to grow up to be a compassionate, very self-assured, successful person. And what I mean by successful is someone who is who knows their value as a human and is happily pursuing what it is that they want to do. So the book is basically very strong on being careful, treating our children with caution because of the love. You want them, you want to incorporate love into every interaction because love is everlasting and it creates better people. When we know we're loved, we feel wonderful. <laughs> and I think it provokes the, the best in us as well. Wow. You know, I remember during that same time in the early 90s, there a book of How to Black Parent. It was a wonderful workshop that came out during that time. And I'm sorry, it, it gave, was called, what was it called? Uh, it was something about black parenting. It was a workshop. A lot of churches, mm -hmm. uh, community centers were offering um, black parenting. I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with that. Yeah, I saved the book, and if I find it, I send it to you as a source Thank of you. reference. But I remember t when I was teaching, I was five years out of teaching, and this was almost the same time your book came out, because I think I was finished school in 89, and mm -hmm. I think around 93, 94 is when that whole series swept the nation about fly parenting. Maybe your book had something to do with, do with it. But it was this whole workshop on how to parent your child. And we came from the the old school, we beat, not necessarily beat literally our child to protect them, but the concept was a little differently. We have more control of our child as black families and versus the other races because we're trying to protect them. In a sense that if you go back, you know, during the early part of the last century, if we didn't keep our child in line, we had someone else is going to put them in line and put them to the grave. So we were a little bit more harsh on our children because we had to instill, hey, you can't do that. You can't do this like this other child. You can't do this because Susie is another race and is able to do what she wants. We don't have it like that. I mean, one thing that goes wrong or go bad, I mean, you're at risk of going to jail or going to the grave. Absolutely. Is, is that coming clear? Yes. yes. And I've so we were harder that. on our children because we have yes. to. and. One teacher who says she's been teaching, one of my master teachers, teaching 42 years in the school district. And she said, hey, we, ha you know, she was about almost 70 years old by mm -hmm. then. And she said, we had to. I had to do mm -hmm. my children that way mm -hmm. because I fear if I didn't in mm -hmm. Houston, you know, Cowtown, nothing, you know. But anyway, anywhere in society, especially in the South, you you know, this so is not Canada. Right. This is not You're Europe. Right. And if if I give Johnny full control, someone is going to kill my child. And how and can I love what? him? I, I just feel like tears are coming to my eyes because my mother said the same thing. They grew up in such a different time. There was a lot of fear. You had to stay in line. You're absolutely right. And it, it was very scary. And I think that that method of raising actually inhibited so many blacks where they it carried over into the into their lives and those few who were able to follow their dream they had something extra but many were confined because they were taught to just stay in your place but another thing i want to add to that mm -hmm. i believe that there was a, there's a lot of harsh 
treatment toward black children from their parents that came from slavery. And that's the beatings or the whoopings that were so popular. Thank God they're going out of style now. <laughs> <laughs> Something I would never do. And some, especially the those in lower economic situations, the way they speak to their children. And I've always felt that that was left, that was a legacy left over from slavery. Whereas, you know, you're not, you're not as good as everyone else. And self-consciously, I think a lot of parents taught that message to their black children and treated them according to that message. Not all, but I've seen it. I've seen that attitude. But then again, I've seen it in white families as well, where the parents were not very loving or quick to punish and hit. So, but yeah, you, you absolutely hit the nail on the head with the, um, the fear. But now it's changed. And my son, we had this conversation the other day. He said, Mom, I don't feel like a minority. I am an American. I don't feel like there's anything that's denied me. I feel like I can do anything. I feel like I have power. And that made me feel great to hear him say that. Mm -hmm. But I also know that, thank God, we are living in times where he can be allowed to feel that way. Absolutely. And if you look at, you know, things start to really change in the 70s and the 80s. And it's going to take some time, you know, maybe another 50 years or better, probably in 100 years. Is this going to be like a fake memory? But if you... Go back, you know, I think even within churches, community groups, and even with some grandparents, they're kind of not as harsh anymore. They're calming down because now there's more opportunities available. You have some still in their head, you know, they they backslide and say, oh, you know, then they catch themselves. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they really have given their grandchild or even the recent parents given their more children more flexibility and, and more freedom. And with the integrated communities, and we can move safely into different communities and that integration. But we also just have to keep in mind, you don't, you know, even though that we are African Americans, still be conscious that we don't have the same rights. Absolutely. And it might be a a few generations more. Yeah, you have your Barack Obamas, Mm -hmm. but also you have your Trayvons as well, uh, that you can walk on the street and something could happen. When you get stopped, something could happen. So. It's not there yet, but we've made a lot of progress in that. And going back to, your, I think, a couple of questions, your ideas of, I think we already mentioned, but the you have a self-ceremony that's been performed with all your children. Has the ceremony that's been performed with all your children? Well, I performed it initially with Michael. Okay. The twins, I never did it. And I asked myself why recently, and I think I was too busy taking care of twins. (laughs) But I have the ceremony between my five-year-old and I. It has been performed. And she Mm -hmm. enjoyed it very much. And if you don't mind, I'd like to read it. Sure. That's what I was going to write to ask. (laughs) Oh, great. Okay. Now, before I begin reading, I'd like you to understand that although it's called a marriage, it's not an exchange of vows. Only the parent is vowing. The child is the recipient. Okay. I do hold sacred the anatomy, which I have created now. At this moment and forever shall I cherish and adore you. I gave to you the gift of life wrapped with a never-ending ribbon. For one end I shall hold and offer you the other, so that no matter how far you travel in mind or body, you will always find your way back to me if I am needed, for I promise to never let go of my end, but will patiently await your return if I am needed. Together we will endure the joys and pains of existence, the tears and laughter of life. Your beauty will make me exquisite. My love will render you glorious. A true marriage we will share, an allegiance of truth, honesty, devotion, and adoration. Comrades always inspired by the purest love. Wow. Yes, it's beautiful. And it it was a pleasure 
to not only create it, but to be able to actually participate. And consider that I, I took these vows over the years. I mean, my children and I are not perfect people, and there's been times I temporarily forgot that I took the vows. But then I realized. You <laughs> <laughs> probably had to probably had lay hands or something. How do you punish, punish your child? You know, I don't like to hit. I prefer talking. I have spanked my children, but I believe in organized spanking. I don't believe in smacking or spontaneous hitting. If you're in trouble, come on, let's go in the room. You lay across the bed. I'm going to whack your butt a few times. Never really hurts. However, they get the message. But I do prefer to talk. And I'll tell you, the very first time that I went after Michael with a belt, he was maybe 11. I can't remember what he did, but I was so upset and angry, probably something dangerous, or he he needed to get whacked a few times, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I went in his room, I yelled at him, I whacked him, and I left the room, and I felt terrible because I had never, ever spanked him before. I went back to apologize. He was sitting on the bed smiling. He said, boy, mom, I didn't know you had it in you. It's about time you toughened up. <laughs> 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 so I've never forgotten that. But with the with the girls, usually a threat is enough to straighten them up. Now, I did have unique punishments for them when they weren't getting along because to me it's very, very important that my children love each other and get along forever as long as they're on this planet together. So for them to argue is very upsetting to me. And mm-hmm. what I would do is make them hug for 15 minutes. Usually by the time the 15 minutes was up, they were best friends again. And as the twins got older, I had to do something a little more sophisticated because the hugging wasn't working. So when they would fight, because by then Michael was too old to fight with them, I'd make them rub my feet uh, 40 minutes each foot. And that pretty much took care of that. Wow. Do you think, I know children will (laughs) test you to no end because they, you know, in the cells environment, the best sellers are always the children. It the child can can get things out of parents that nobody else can get because they know they around them so much. They've been mm-hmm. you know just where you look at it. You have your parents, but you have your child. They know what to say at times to get you to do what they want. <laughs> and, and we uh, know we know when that is happening as parents. Sometimes you do, and yeah, most times you do, and sometimes they just catch yeah. you out guard because you're, you're mentally, you're tired, you don't feel like doing it. Okay, go. You know, that, that's you're not true. really thinking. That's true, but I I normally recognize that, and sometimes I'll allow it. If it's something I agree with, oh, sure, you can have that. But if it's something I, I'm adamant about, no, there's a certain look. I look him straight in the face and very firmly say, no, that's the end of it. Do not ask again. And that usually works. I mean, once that definite no is applied, you don't want to cross that line. Do you think, in your opinion, corporal punishment has something to do with our children being more violent? Or do you think it's is really, that was the old adage, until we got really these video games in the last 20 years and internet and violent TV. The, the conception in the past say, hey, we think corporal punishment should be taken out of the schools because uh, you shouldn't hit your tr- children because it makes them more violent. Do you, what is your opinion on that? I agree. Back to the organized spanking, I think they're they're more acceptable. Some parents do hit their kids, smack them around, punch them, and in front of anybody, it doesn't matter. And I think that that creates a lot of resentment and anger. And can definitely cause children to lash out at someone else because it's done to them, which is why I said I I support organized spanking. You know, I don't want to hit you or beat you out of anger. Okay, let's go in here, lay across the bed, you get spanked. And that way it's not, you're not being spontaneously violent. You understand it's it's Mm -hmm. an organized, expected occurrence. Hmm. Wow. You know the the yeah, I remember them taking start to take these things out in the eighties. Do you think the Cosby Show in the eighties kind of changed the way of we doing things as we black parent it? You know that they, they had their moments at at times. You know they try to push 
a forceful moment. And I don't think we only had maybe one time that, or maybe a couple during that whole series, that you finally see Dr. Huxtable get to the point that, I'm just trying to re- recall one with uh, his son, that he had to have a one-to-one session with him. We don't know mm-hmm. if he was laying hands on him, but it looked like a peer- an intense type uh, scene. Do you think that played a part in our culture in kind of turning the tide that things are a little different, that we don't have to be this physical with our child? Yes, and not only that, it gave us excellent role models to look at and want to be like. I absolutely loved the Cosby Show. I remember it came on on Thursday nights, and I didn't plan anything but to be in front of the television. And it definitely had an influence on me, a very positive influence on my perspective on the black family, absolutely. And there has been um, other shows as well, A Different World. It gave black youth an opportunity to see college life. Even those who were not going or never planned on going, it still opened up that dialogue or that idea. We don't know how many children ended up at college simply because of that show. So, yes, I was very influenced by the Cosby Show, and I believe they had a terrific, positive impact on the black community. And, yes, I believe the influence of treating your children in a different manner were there as well, in a loving manner to communicate. Yes, it had all those dynamics. How will you advise parents uh, to participate in the ceremony? Well, there is some advice, some information on the website. Mm -hmm. There's a tab that you can click on, and it'll just give you some general ideas about the ceremony. Basically, use your imagination. Mm -hmm. You can can be extravagant with it. You can be simple with it. It's really what you want, how far or how big you want to make it as an individual. But I do hope it catches on and more people decide to do it with their child or children, I think is absolutely beautiful. And there's, you can leave a comment, anyone who's interested or anyone who's going to do it or has done it, they can leave a comment about it, and I will post it on the website. And also, their certificates are available for sale on the website as well. It's the ceremony itself on a, on a separate card, and then the certificates that you sign to show that you did the ceremony. And they're really beautiful. And I think it's it's a nice keepsake, something to have and to treasure. And uh, how do you feel about the average parent that does not do or they should be doing? The average parent who, I'm sorry, could you? Could okay. You... Yeah, I was just trying to get an idea. Like, for example, what do you feel the average parent does not do and what they should do? And we talked about it earlier in one sense, but in a sense of talking about what they should be doing, really. Okay. I think the average parent does not respect their children. What I mean by respect is minding how they typically interact with them. So often as parents, we feel we can treat our children as we please because they belong to us, which is true, but they don't realize or respect that the importance of respect for any relationship to function at its highest level. I also think the average parent does not take into consideration that their children grow up, and when you look them in the eyes as adults, you're looking at your child as an adult and you are an adult. What do you want to feel? Do you want to feel guilt about a lot of things that you did or the ways that you treat it? that adult when they were a child, or do you want Mm -hmm. to feel good about the influence or the role that you played in your lives? And these things need to be thought of as well while they're little. We don't think about that. Well, they grow up, and hmm, I don't want them to grow up and say, oh, you were so terrible to me. And, you know, I mean, they're going to have something to say anyway, no matter how great (laughs) you are. (laughs) But you don't want it to be true. (laughs) Wow. And I think the last couple of things real quick. What is your greatest moment as a mother? And what are you going to be doing next on your journey? 
my greatest moment as a mother, I actually have four. And that was seeing the face of my baby for the first time, each baby. That was what I waited nine months for. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I've had four great moments. And what I'd like to do next, I'm actually working on a how to make love to your children. I've been taking notes for a second book because the dynamics are different. Mm-hmm. That originally wrote how to make love to your child. Um, I had one child. Now I have four, and <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot. <laughs> and I feel that I've gained some insights that would be helpful as well that come with having more than one child. And the funny thing about that, my daughter, Carissa, the five-year-old, she's familiar with the book since I've reintroduced it. And she said, Mom, you know, when you wrote that book, How to Make Love to Your Child, you only had one kid. Now you have four, so you have to write How to Make Love to Your Kids. And I said, okay, honey, and I will do that. But I actually had already started to take notes for a second book. And I also write children's books. I really enjoy it. They're fun. It's a great yeah, way are. to relieve stress. So I have some characters that I've developed, and I'm very excited to eventually come out with some children's books. And I wow. believe children should read and just make books that they just love so much they want to read these books. Wow. And what do you, if you had a closing statement that you want to leave us with, what would you like to close with? Well... I'd like to say that initially when I wrote the book, we were kind of in a dark ages, especially as far as African Americans. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of progress. I'm out in public now. I hear, it makes me smile. Before you go in public and you would hear, especially blacks, interacting with their kids a certain way, it kind of made you shrink and was not nice. And that's changed a lot. And I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful for that. It makes me smile. So I think we've come along naturally because actually that was one of the motivations for the book, the way that we interact with our children um, habitually. But that is changing, but we still have a long way to go. And I recommend for those who have changed and understand what I'm saying to buy the book, maybe for someone they know that still needs to make that change because there is advice that is very helpful, some things that perhaps have not occurred to any parents that make perfectly good sense and do help to instill a sense of value and confidence in your child. And that's one of the main goals for the book. I want all children to feel loved, happy, confident, and just have a healthy attitude toward themselves and, most importantly, others. Wow. Well, Thank you for coming on to the program today. I really appreciate it. I mean, we've Thank it's you. been a great 45 minutes, and I learned a lot today. And again, I'm going to look for that book this week since I have a lot of downtime. And mm-hmm. if I find it, I definitely will uh, write you and send it on to you. And Wonderful. it might be a good resource for you to have in the future as you write your third book <laughs> when it comes okay. back out. Great. And also, before I forget, there's a website called The Man Can. And I came across it on Twitter. It was a wonderful website. It's about positive, portraying black men positively. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be great for your viewers to know about, to kind of take a look at it. A lot going on. He's really trying hard to get, you know, to change how black men are perceived. And I love that. So I'd just like to end with that as well. Okay. And it's called The Man Can. I'm sorry. The Black Man Can dot org. No problem. I will reach out to him. And in do the meantime, that. do that. Okay. In the meantime, give us your website address and how they can find your book. And if they had any questions of you, how can they contact you? Okay. Um, the website is how to make love to your child dot com. You can Google that, or you can Google Rochelle Riley Wilson, and it'll come up as well. Mm-hmm. Again, the book is available in three formats on the website only. You can purchase the original book, which is 20 years old, and hand-signed and hand-numbered. If you don't wish to do that, the book is available on Amazon. You can go connect to Amazon from my website or go directly to Amazon in both um, print-on-demand format and ebook format. 
you like to leave a message for me, the there's contact uh, on the website, and anyone's more than welcome to put in their information and their question or comment, and I will be more than happy to respond. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on to the program. You're welcome. Thank you for having me, Tim, and you have a wonderful day. Uh, great. Thank you. Have a great one. Okay. Take care. Take care. You can download this episode on Blog Talk Radio, uh, the Apple Capital site for the Core Business Show. Uh, also, I did put the link to Ms. Wilson's page there as well, so you can click on that and go to her website. You can download this episode on the iTunes, a podcast, a pod feed, or blog at Apple Capital Group. Thank you for listening to the program, and have a great week. Take care. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.